I started blowing glass in college at uh, Salisbury University. I saw the glass blowing and it was just like fire and, and activity and it's so fast and pretty aggressive in terms of working with the medium and uh, I was like, I gotta try this. So I've been doing it about almost 10 years and uh, I'm like getting somewhere but still not even close to you know where I want to be. It's so frustrating when you're first learning but, uh, but the key is to be more excited than frustrated. You know, it's, it's gonna get better as long as you practice. You have to figure out the medium and it takes time and it takes practice and it takes repetition. Doing it, doing it, doing it before it, you start to develop anything. You know, you have to learn how the glass moves before you can start controlling it. That's the hard part is, you know, being diligent and uh, sticking with it. You just spend hours and hours of breaking stuff. It's so frustrating, but it's so rewarding when you get that thing right. So it's like, you just smash it, smash it, smash it, and then you finally start to make progress and you're like, that's why you do it. I'll come up with an idea and then I'll just practice it until I figure it out. And if it's something I'm proud of, it'll go in the gallery. If it's something I'm not proud of, it'll go in the garden. I sketch a lot of new ideas before I make it. It helps me to, to develop my ideas. That's the thing with glass is it's, it's, it's all in here and you're just translating the ideas through your fingers in a three-dimensional way, which is it's like really, really rewarding to like have it here and then to eventually like have it here. I'm like, that was in here at some point. Everything starts with the furnace. It's about 2,000 degrees, and that's just a giant ceramic pot full of clear molten glass. You always start with a hot pipe, what we call a blow pipe. It's like a hollow metal rod. So you preheat the rods so they're hot enough that you can get the glass to stick to it. So that's pretty much the basis of everything. You start by getting some glass on the end of a preheated rod, and then for you know a piece like this, you have kind of like a little bigger than a football size blob of molten glass. And from there, it's just shaping and pulling and blowing and letting the heat and using your tools to, to develop the shape. Uh, the Glass Grill is a restaurant uh, connected to the shop. It's like a glass blowing themed restaurant. They've been open about two years now. My parents saw it as, you know, my business might make for a more lively, more interesting restaurant atmosphere. So. I think it's amazing. I think it's really cool that someone can take something as simple as glass and turn it into that. Where else? You can't see this kind of stuff anywhere else when you go to dinner. You know, chandeliers, the light fixtures, all the sinks in the bathrooms all the accent pieces and stuff up above the bar is all stuff that we've made out in the shop. It takes time, it takes years, decades for some people and it's a lifetime commitment to really developing like fine work. I do Saturday, there's glass blown stuff going on, so people are welcome. People that just come in, they see it, and they're like, I want to do that. It gives them a better appreciation for the work. And they'll see the process, they understand at least somewhat what goes into all of these objects. Nothing's mold blown, everything's freehand, so there's, there's no two that are the same, and everything's unique, and not like anything you'll find anywhere else.